All right, now joining us uh, to chat more about the online element of victimization against children is Noni Clausen from the Canadian Centre for Child Protection. Thanks for joining us, Noni. And you are in charge as well. You're running cybertip.ca. Tell us Correct. about cybertip.ca. Okay, cybertip.ca is Canada's tip line for reporting the online sexual exploitation of children. Okay. It's part of the uh, Canada government's strategy, national strategy, to reduce the incidence of sexual exploitation of children on the internet. So if someone comes across an image or a video, they go to cybertip.ca cyber to report this? That's correct. We're really that we are um, the front door, if you will, to reporting. So what we do, what our function is, is to triage reports for law enforcement. We are not law enforcement, but okay. we take in the reports to deem what is potentially illegal and therefore, and there that is then uh, forwarded to the jurisdiction, the law enforcement jurisdiction where it resides mm -hmm. and they determine whether or not an investigation will ensue from there. But what it does is it really then uh, it brings down the workload so that law enforcement uh, can really dedicate themselves to the investigation side of crimes that fall within their jurisdiction. But you also see the conversations that happen when a suspected predator is trying to lure a child. We sure do. And yeah. what are you seeing in those conversations? Um, well, what we're seeing is that there's really two areas that we look at, and one is the majority of reports that we receive to CyberTip are dealing with child abuse images. So they're dealing with uh, child pornography mm -hmm. material, um, and then we also are dealing with situations where individuals are communicating with kids online for sexual purposes. So when we see the dialogue, typically what we see around that is more with adolescents, mm -hmm. um, and and again, what that would be is individuals trying to get kids to comply. They're looking for compliance in getting kids to send naked images to engage sexually on the internet with them. And um, do they try to meet them? You know what? That used to be the trend that we were seeing. Um, now, what we're seeing is a bit of a shift in the luring cases that we have. We're seeing more so that they are communicating with the kids for the purposes of getting the sexually explicit images mm -hmm. of the children for extortion purposes. Mm -hmm. So they're really um, using the images to extort the children for more Im for more imagery and to humiliate the kids. Mm -hmm. And um, and I think that's really important because prior to uh, to this few years ago and just shows how rapidly things are changing. And your numbers are going up. Our numbers are going up and it used to be more so for meeting up for sexual purposes but we're seeing a lot of harm being done to kids when there is no actual meeting. And I think one of the misconceptions out there as we saw in that story is that just because someone is viewing this child images or video online they think they're not doing anything wrong because they're not creating the child pornography and they're not actually physically touching the children. That is, a, that is wrong. Absolutely. They are perpetrators of victimizing these children. Well, those are real children, right? So what we know is really what they're witnessing is a crime scene. So we you know these are images of children who are being abused, used for sexual purposes, and it's being memorialized. Mm -hmm. and, and in fact, um, there's a second layer of impact that's being seen on the kids with images being taken because there's a record. There's a record of it. So it's really difficult, especially for youth to come forward when they've been maybe engaging in behaviors where they have taken pictures or experimenting and, you know, really normative type of behaviors for youth. Right. Um, and then when it's being used in, in a fashion to harm them or for exploitative purposes, it's harder for them to come forward because there's a record of what they've done. Wow. And it becomes very, very tough for them. Is cybertip.ca making a difference? So absolutely. Um, you know, what we know is that reporting makes a difference. Mm -hmm. uh, we know that through reporting, Canadians, are they're playing a critical role in helping to protect children. Mm -hmm. um, and it really, it's making it easier for Canadians to navigate through this complex time of right. wireless, um, connected world. It's a starting point. It is, because this way they have a mechanism to report concerns to receive um, some advice, some support, educational resources. A huge part of our mandate is to provide education to families for how to protect kids online. Terrific. Noni Klassen uh, from the Canadian Centre for Child Protection, thanks for joining us today. Thank Again, you. that is cybertip.ca. Here are some uh, information, some statistics collected by cybertip.ca. Stay with us. We have lots more to come on this special edition of CTV Morning Live.